Hey, hi, hello. My name is Casey and I am the founder of Slow Grooves. And Slow Grooves is a space where movement meets mindfulness. And we're going to chat all about what I've been building and pouring my love into. And to start off in simplest terms, Slow Grooves is an invitation to look at shuffling through a different lens, um, a lens of personal development and transformation alongside learning something that's really cool and fun and brings you into alignment with yourself, your body, your mind, your soul, all three of those things. We live in a world that really teaches us to disconnect from our bodies, be it mindless media, uh, scrolling, distracting ourselves with like substances, things we know aren't good for us, food that's not good for us, all of these things that we're just taught and it's it's like at a subconscious level. But at Slow Grooves, we teach how to reconnect with our bodies and come from a place of empowerment and alignment with not just our body, but our mind and our soul. They're all deeply connected. When you find your rhythm, you align your soul, and when you move with purpose and awareness, you unlock the potential that is already within you, and stepping into the world of personal development alone can feel so chaotic and overwhelming and overstimulating. It feels like there is so much to learn, you're so behind, you need to listen to all these podcasts, read a million books, and one a day, and all these things, and now you may be watching this thinking, oh my gosh, I need to add shuffling as like another to do or like there's just one more thing or if you're anything like I was when I discovered shuffling I was overflowing with excitement and passion and eagerness to learn and I spent countless hours every day practicing and teaching myself in my bedroom but you could be at any side of the scale wherever you are in your journey it's totally okay to be there and slow grooves is a space that takes a simple approach to learning a skill the art of shuffling and it blends that with personal development because they're really one and the same and through this experience we create a pathway for ourselves to embrace grace and flow and really just bliss in the flow state and on this path whether you have experience or you're a beginner there's really so much room for us to always grow and i carry a mindset where i'm always a student no matter how far i've traveled or have come in any any area i will always be a student there's always so much to learn and putting yourself in that place will inevitably allow you to be successful in whatever it is that you're setting forth to to explore and and bring into your world. So when we're on this path, we're giving ourselves that freedom to experience level ups that will be inevitable as long as we keep ourselves on this path. And newsflash, it's kind of hard to take yourself off of it once once you realize it's your path because it's yours. Um, And it really allows you to break down barriers and connect with yourself on a deeper level. And ultimately be more confident with who you are and showing up as your most authentic self, which is such a beautiful thing we get to do here in life. And something else that I preach is how dancing really creates a sense of trusting the flow of life. And that is all I want for you and myself and everyone that I cross paths with just to trust the flow of life. Uh, We are always exactly where we're meant to be at the exact right time. So today's conversation is going to really talk about three things that will follow you on your dance journey and also just your journey in life. Um, They're always there and we're just going to bring some awareness to it. So let's get into it. The first one is giving yourself permission. So whether you have done it one time or you've done it a million times, um, giving yourself permission looks like saying yes it looks like being curious and trying something it is so easy to tell yourself that you are too old or you're too overweight you're not in shape you don't have time all of these things um you're too sad you're too this to that all of these things that you will create to put in between you and something that is meant for you or something that is good for you and I'm here to remind you that you can give yourself permission. This is something that will be there all the time because no matter if this is your first or millionth time dancing, every time before you actually start doing the dance, you have to give yourself permission to do that. So that is something that will always be with you and will 
you will carry with you on this journey. <laughs> so you may hear a song and you get that like burning impulse to move your body and dance or you may see someone on the internet doing it and you're like, oh my gosh, like, and you feel inspired. Um, you may see something out in the world, whatever it is. Um, you will see that and get that impulse and that is when you give yourself permission because you're like, oh yeah, I can do this too and you allow yourself to access that part of yourself. So giving yourself permission is is so important because you're the only one that can do it. No one can do that for you. Yes, the outside world and things beyond you may inspire you and lead you to that path of giving yourself permission, but ultimately you are the only one who can give yourself permission. So I am just reminding you of that. There's a few things that you will have to give yourself permission to do. So the first thing that you have to give yourself permission to do is feel. <laughs> so in a world that teaches you to numb, I am reminding you that it's okay to feel things. Feelings may be that that thought and that experience of telling yourself like you're too old or you're not in shape. Get over it. <laughs> I can't say that. Maybe I can say that. I don't know. <laughs> but the key here is to not attach yourself to those feelings, which we will talk more about. The second step here is giving yourself permission to feel silly. This is something that will also follow you everywhere in your journey. Um, no one starts something as an expert. I think this is common sense, but I'm just here to remind you that everyone is a beginner. We all start somewhere. And even when you look at it through the lens of like, we're always evolving and becoming better versions of ourselves, like you will always be a beginner at whatever version you're at, right? And then it'll you'll have that time where it's like, right before you jump to the next level of your journey and then you'll realize like okay maybe I've, I've learned enough here so then like you just go to the next classroom you will feel silly your body will be flailing around you may not have a single clue what you're doing and that is okay because nobody knows what they're doing especially when they start the key is just leaning into the silliness when you feel it like if you feel silly doing a move because you don't know how to do it and you're learning how to do it like lean into that let yourself feel silly um i think this is a great moment to just show you a video of what i looked like when i was learning um six years ago and <laughs> this is what i looked like when i started and six years later i look like this and it it was a journey to get here but i felt really silly along the way and there's times where i still feel silly and i lean into it every single time do not take yourself so seriously and the third step here is giving yourself permission to take up space. When we are choosing to dance, whether it's shuffling, whatever genre you want to partake in, um, we are really giving ourselves permission to take up space. So what does that mean? It's a combination of a lot of things, but it's really just like being seen, being felt, being experienced. Allow yourself to take up that space. When you say yes to dancing and you step into that that space of dancing, you are really aligning yourself with something that's bigger than you and you are opening yourself up to expression, which is something that is so beautiful. And I truly believe everyone deserves to feel and I would love for everyone to feel that. So you have to give yourself permission to take up that space. If you don't give yourself permission to take up space, you may not do the dance. You may shy away. You may say no. And that is the opposite of what we want for you. Allow yourself, give yourself the permission to take up space because you deserve to be here. You deserve to share your magic. You deserve to share your light with the world because we need it. We need it so bad. And the second thing that will follow you everywhere on your dance journey, I am calling it finding your sweet spot. That will always be there in life, in dance, everywhere you will have to find your sweet spot. In shuffling specifically, it is when you've given yourself permission. So now you're doing it. You're, you're doing the dance. You're becoming the dance. And then you find yourself in this space where the moves flow effortlessly and you don't have to think or tell yourself. Tell Your brain is no longer telling your feet what to do consciously. Learning any skill, whether it's dance um, or just like the skills that you probably already have, like walking, talking, reading, writing, those are all skills that you have learned to do at a very young age. So dancing is no different. And if you've never done it before, that doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means that it's going to be new for you. And that is totally okay. That's even more of a reason to try, in my opinion. You have to take the knowledge of what the steps are. So the knowledge is like the how-to, the tutorial, the video, the session, whatever it is, the steps, how to do it. You take that 
and you repeat it over and over again. (laughs) Um, The repetition of the application of the knowledge. So there are so many resources out there with knowledge. You can look up and find so many tutorials, so many how to, so many people sharing how to do these things. But you have to give yourself the permission and then take the step to apply the knowledge. Knowledge can never turn into wisdom without the application of the knowledge. So wisdom is just embodied knowledge. So when you take the knowledge, the information, and the how-tos, the tutorials, you apply the action of doing it over and over again, it then turns into wisdom and that is when it becomes embodied and that is when it becomes a soul expression because you're no longer consciously thinking about doing it. It is something that is just happening before you you can just become the witness of it happening because it is like deeply embedded in your brain it's like talking walking reading writing all those things you don't have to like really think about the step of doing it you just do it and the best way to know that you are in your sweet spot is you can think about what you're going to eat for dinner or you can (laughs) think about something that has nothing to do with what you're doing while you're doing it and you're not messing up like your thoughts can go somewhere else or you can have no thoughts like you were just completely blank and you were just flowing and that is how you know you're in your sweet spot So the first step here in finding your sweet spot is learning the move. So taking each step, going very slowly, one step at a time, and allowing yourself to just be there one step at a time, learn the move and just understand the step. Take the information of what goes where and who's doing what and just absorb that knowledge. Just take that knowledge and absorb it. And slowly, 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 just apply it like one step at a time, no music, no, no, like trying to go fast, just one step at a time to learn the move. And then once you repeat the move enough, it turns into that embodied wisdom and you go to a place of no thought while you're doing the move. So the second step is drilling for the sweet spot. So drilling is basically repeating the move over and over again and again. (laughs) So you start very slow when you're drilling. So in slow grooves, we have guided tutorials that go from 60 BPM all the way up to like 125 BPM. They vary. And I guide you through from the slowest BPM to the fastest BPM. And ultimately, the intention here is to find your sweet spot. So finding your sweet spot, it will be different for everyone. I always recommend starting with the lowest BPM and then working your way to the fastest BPM and then just seeing and noticing where you're like falling off beat and where you lose track of like listening. So if you if you can listen to the song while you're doing it, that's your sweet spot. Um, if you start at like 60 BPM and you go to 80 BPM and then like it feels good at 80 BPM so you stop there you might not realize your sweet spot is actually at 90 BPM so I always encourage going through them all starting at the lowest bring it to the highest and then go backwards go back down and then notice like how much better it feels when you slow it down because then you realize just how good you're actually doing it and it will give you that like mental boost of like what you're doing (laughs) and it will give you that encouragement of where you're at and like knowing where you are and one of the things about knowing where your sweet spot is that is so crucial and so essential is that it helps you know where you want to go like if you are at 60 bpm and you're like oh my gosh i want to dance to a faster song (laughs) because 60 bpm is pretty low And But knowing that you're there, that is like the most beautiful thing because then you know where you can work up to and you know how to, you know the path to get there. Drill for your sweet spot. Just keep repeating it. Keep drilling. (laughs) And then the third step here is exploring your sweet spot. So once you find your sweet spot, you found the BPM where you can do the move effortlessly. You're not thinking, maybe you're thinking about what you're going to eat, all these things, whatever it is. From the waist down, you are not thinking about anything that's going on you are somewhere else and (laughs) that is your sweet spot when you are here this is when you can explore your sweet spot here you'll notice that you can actually listen to the music so not only are you doing the moves you're actually listening to the song and this is where you can explore musicality you can explore your upper body flow you can explore all of these things like taking up space moving around you can tell yourself what to do next because you're no longer thinking about about that move you're thinking about what to do up here or whatever so that is something that i always encourage is exploring your sweet spot and then really sit in that place of like i am doing it you're listening to the music you're not thinking about your feet you're just doing it so enjoy that because let that will cultivate more confidence inside you than you could imagine (laughs) 
And now we have the third thing that you will carry with you always on your dance journey and your shuffle journey and your personal development journey and that is connecting with your inner compass and that is something that you will be learning so much of here and on a movement and personal development journey your inner compass will be guiding you the entire way and whether you know it or not it already has your inner compass has brought you right to this very moment it has helped you navigate every single moment and experience of your life this far and I'm just here to remind you that if you are conscious of it, awesome. If you are not conscious of this, if you were like, what are you talking about? Your inner compass, your inner what? Um, <laughs> think, just know that you've been doing this already your whole life. And now imagine if you were consciously using this inner compass to <laughs> boobs. <laughs> She's so cute. Do you want to say hello? Your inner compass is essentially your inner being and it is a part that when you connect to within yourself will give you all the answers you need from one moment to the next and when you start to understand it and recognize it and connect with it you'll realize and you will feel so deeply just how it has been there all along with you on every step a lot of things will start to fall into place and make more sense our inner compasses will vary from person to person because we are all so uniquely different, but we are all so connected, so deeply connected. So one inner compass will not look the same as the others. <laughs> so an example of using your inner compass is like being aware and recognizing that you have a pattern of not showing up to your dance practice when you are going through something that is emotionally hectic or chaotic or heavy or weighing you down and knowing that you have that pattern, knowing you have that pattern, that's the first thing. But your inner compass comes into play with the choices and how you navigate that emotional crisis or that emotional weight and heaviness that you're carrying and that's circumstance so your emotional compass will be the one guiding you through your inner compass will be the one guiding you through so if your inner compass is telling you that you can shut down and not do things and just close yourself off from all the things you love for like a month and that includes moving your body and dancing and you listen to that you will be then creating from that place and guided through your life with that inner compass telling you and steering the ship that way because you're listening to that inner compass but if you're connected to your inner compass and you are aware that you're connected to it and you recognize this pattern you can start creating a bit differently so maybe because you are aware that this pattern exists you can do something for your future self like create a playlist or like save a really fun playlist that i already made for you and put that on because you know it's going to lift up your vibe and raise your vibe when you are feeling that and even if it's something that you're like i do not feel like doing this right now you know that your inner compass will feel better by doing the thing like dancing and moving so you just do it right because you know it's gonna be the best for you and you know it serves you and let's be real if you are in a stressful time of your life that is the most important time for you to show up for your practice and for you to dance and share your magic so all of these practices inside slow grooves are designed to meet you where you're at and not the opposite. So it's not about becoming something you're not. It's not about going somewhere that is outside of you. It's not about getting something that's outside of yourself. They're designed to meet you where you're at so that you can ultimately like meet yourself where you're at and grow from there. The first step of using your inner compass is feeling your emotions without attaching yourself to them. This is a lot easier said than done, but us humans, we have emotions and emotions are simply energy in motion. So it is our job to allow them to stay in motion and to keep moving. When we are clinging to emotions, we are stopping the motion. We're stopping the flow of the emotion and we're holding on to something so tightly that may not be meant to be held so tightly for so long. So they become stagnant in our bodies. So when we are dancing and when we're moving, we're actually moving. Hey, <laughs> bloops. When we are dancing and moving, we are actually moving the energy that's stored in our body. So things may arise. Emotions may come to the surface. You may feel fear. 
all of these things may show up and you may have all these emotions or you may feel really good, whatever it is. So the biggest reason why I don't believe in attaching to our emotions, even the good ones, (laughs) because they're fleeting, they're changing, they're always coming and going. And when you're attaching to them, like I, it's not healthy to be happy all the time. It's not healthy to be sad all the time. Life is really a balance of all of these things. So allowing yourself to feel what's present and accept it and embrace whatever is present is how we can navigate life with the least resistance and the most um, magnetism. When we attach ourselves to emotions, we may then be attaching ourselves to the experience that is present while we're feeling that emotion. So say you are dancing and you're feeling super happy and then you keep dancing and you're feeling super happy. You then associate dancing with feeling happy. So when you are feeling happy, you will be dancing. And then when you're dancing, you're feeling happy. So then imagine the happiness goes away. Some, some crisis happens, something's going on in your world. And then you're sad or you're feeling something that's not positive. Are you going to go show up and dance because you associated dancing with the emotion of being happy? So when that emotion isn't present, are you going to show up for your practice? Are you going to show up for your body? Are you going to show up for loving yourself? Or are you only going to do that when you feel good and when you feel happy? Even though usually the thing that will make you feel good is the thing that you probably don't want to do when you're sad, right? Or when you're feeling low, whatever it is. So when you aren't attaching yourself to an emotion and you're attaching and connecting yourself with your inner compass, it gives you that freaking freedom to do what is meant for you and what is best for you, regardless of what emotion you're feeling. So I'm not just showing up to my dance floor and my dance practice when I feel good. I'm also there when I'm feeling not so good or when there's challenges or when I feel like I can't or I shouldn't, whatever it is. So the second step in connecting with your inner compass is curating a vibe. So I love calling myself the vibe curator if i was gonna have a title that is what i want it would want it to be um basically create a space for yourself that allows you to tune into a frequency or a vibe that makes you feel good and that keeps you inspired and aligned so i love to create playlists so i will say like I will create and curate playlists that I know will make me want to dance because they just have like all the songs that move me and make me want to get up and shake my booty or something, you know? It could also be having something that's like aesthetically pleasing. I love having fun lights. I love having the plants, all the stuff. I love having the fun lights. I love having the incense going. I make sure to touch all all the six senses while <laughs> while um, curating a vibe. Over on Slow Grooves, we have for members like all of these resources on vibes that I've curated for you already and you can get inspiration from. And I just encourage you to go create a vibe for yourself. And every time that you step into that vibe, it will just be a reminder of the energy you can already access. You just have to choose to. So by having those things set up for you, it will allow you to easily access the vibe that your past self curated for you to keep you moving and keep you on your dance floor. It's really just a reminder that you always have the energy to tap into, to get up and dance and do your thing. You just have to allow yourself to access it and you just have to like align and tune into it. This brings me to the third step of connecting to your inner compass and that is trust the process. There is something that we are all doing in life and we are being while becoming. They are one in the same and they are also the complete opposite because if you're being, it's really like doing nothing and if you're becoming, it means you're actually taking steps to doing something. So we are both being and becoming here and I'm just, we're always doing this. I'm just here to bring your awareness to it and I just encourage you to enjoy the process of being and becoming. One does not exist without the other. (laughs) When you trust the process, you are essentially trusting yourself that you're exactly where you're meant to be at the exact right time. And that is when really all the things start coming to you that you feel like you're lacking because you're just so trusting that you're exactly where you're meant to be at the exact right time because you are and you always will be. (laughs) So your reminder here, to trust the process. So to wrap things up, slow grooves is more than learning the steps. It is a simple approach to 
navigating life with a lens of transformation and being and becoming and love and acceptance but it is also about connecting deeper with ourselves showing up in the world as our full selves because we deserve nothing less than that and these principles can be applied to all the areas of your life not just your dance floor but especially beyond it stepping into your own pathway and your own journey of transformation is so brave and i am so proud of you and i hope that you feel the shift and i hope that you feel your life expand before your eyes every time that you say yes to showing up for yourself and your dance floor and slow groups so with that being said i love you guys the journey is just starting really but we i've been on this journey for a while but it really feels like every day i'm like it's just beginning but no it's been going and it's just gonna keep going and i hope that you have a beautiful day night afternoon morning um moment wherever you are i hope that you're there fully and i will talk to you soon <laughs> bye <laughs>